This is the Amazon basin of Venezuela, home to a primitive native Indian tribe called the Piaroa. But the people here say this jungle is home to something else. Monster spiders. Larger than any documented in history or science. Preying on local animals. One wonders if such a thing could exist. And yet reports are nothing new. Around the globe, people have reported encounters with huge arachnids. His body was this big. It was brown in color, very thick body, powerful, thick legs. It had the ugliest fangs I've ever seen. These monster-sized spiders could be a type of tarantula, the largest known spiders in the world. Or they could be an entirely new species, unknown to science. Invertebrates probably exhibit the most diversity of any species or any organisms on the planet. If you're speaking specifically about spiders, there's about 50,000 known species to date, and there's probably easily 10 times more than that that have not been found. The largest known tarantulas in the world, called the Goliaths, are native to the Amazon rainforest of South America. Many spider species catch and kill their prey with the help of a web. But the Goliaths are ferocious predators, silently stalking the victims before pouncing to deliver the fatal blow. Their fangs are large enough to pierce through human skin, and their bodies are covered with urticating or stinging hairs. One of history's most terrifying giant spider sightings took place in the jungles of the Congo in Central Africa. It happened to a British explorer, R.K. Lloyd, and his wife, Marguerite. In 1938, Lloyd and his new bride decided to go on an adventure safari for their honeymoon. As Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd were driving down this jungle track in the middle of the Congo rainforest, they saw a large but very odd-looking creature crossing the trail ahead of them. Now, at first they thought this was either a very large monkey on all fours or maybe a large jungle cat. But as they got closer to this creature, they were horrified to see that it was actually a gigantic spider, something like a tarantula. According to Lloyd, the spider had a four to five foot leg span, but he was unable to document the sighting. As Lloyd reached for his camera, the giant spider scurried back into the forest and disappeared. Back in the old days of colonial Africa, explorers, big game hunters, from time to time they encounter strange animals, including giant spiders, but they often don't report these observations for fear of just being ridiculed. After all, who's going to believe a story about a spider that with a leg span of four or five feet? That's almost as big as a human being. But history does make a case for the existence of such a monster. 390 million years ago, there were giant prehistoric creatures called Jacolopterus rainii, measuring some eight feet in length. Jacolopterus rainii was a very large sea scorpion, a little bit bigger than a crocodile, or a really good-sized crocodile. It ate very large fish, and anything else you can get with that size, anything you could grab it would eat, including members of its own kind. It was definitely the top predator of its day. A fossilized claw of this creature was found in 2007 in Germany. It alone measured more than a foot and a half long, suggesting creatures like scorpions and spiders once grew to monster-sized proportions. People always knew that there was other large arachnids and arthropods in the past, but no one really knew how big they could get. But if there is evidence of a giant arachnid 390 million years ago, could one still exist in the remote regions of the world? When he was a boy, as the story goes, a giant tarantula crept out of the jungle and into the village where it caught a small dog in its vice-like grip. There was no chance of escape. The spider delivered a fatal dose of poison, then proceeded to drag the dog into the forest. Existing evidence of giant spiders is sparse. But in 2004, this photo from Iraq of an eight-legged monster surfaced on the internet and began spreading like wildfire. The picture shows what appears to be an enormous alien-looking creature. 
the photo isn't the only purported evidence of these desert creatures. Fantastic stories coming back from the Middle East tell of this creature eating the stomachs of camels, racing along the desert floor at speeds of 25 miles an hour, and having an appetite for human flesh. They are called camel spiders, a known animal. But are these photos and stories hoaxes or evidence that camel spiders grow to be giants? MonsterQuest takes a closer look at these stories to see if they are more than urban legends. In Iraq, some servicemen and women have allegedly been bitten by a giant desert predator called a camel spider. These GIs have heard the stories. The ones I've seen are almost as large as my hand. Not quite, but almost. And I have some big hands. It had uh, the ugliest fangs I've ever seen in my life. If you ever saw the predator, it, that's exactly how their mouth looked. I don't fear a lot of things, but that spider in particular uh, just sent chills down my spine. This picture from Iraq surfaced on the internet. But is this evidence of an eight-legged monster in the Iraqi desert or a photographic fake? In the deserts of Iraq, as the stories go, a serviceman is about to bed down for the night. He settles into his cot, but beneath it, something lies in wait. As the lights turn off, the creature crawls beneath the sheets towards his arm. The creature tears into his flesh, delivering a dose of numbing anesthetic with its venom. The soldier feels nothing as he sleeps. The spider is shearing chunks of flesh away. Of course, he doesn't realize any of this because it's anesthetic that's been distributed. When the soldier wakes up the next morning, his arm is covered in blood, the flesh and muscle eaten away. And back in Venezuela, day two of the expedition is underway to find a monster-sized spider. Rick West and Juan Carlos Ramirez return to the village of San Rafael de Manuare for a more extensive search. The shaman takes them deep into the jungle where a huge spider may have dragged a small dog to show them how to catch any giant spiders they encounter. Although spiders have eight eyes, they see very poorly. Instead, they rely on vibrations to sense if prey is nearby. The shaman leads them to a den that likely holds a spider. Using a vine, he slowly draws the creature out. Big one. As it emerges from its lair, they can see it's big, but it is not their monster. The shaman lures more spiders from their underworld. And prepares them for this rarely seen meal. He removes its insides before placing the body on the fire for grilling. The Amazon is not the only place where spiders are a source of fear and fascination. They are ancient creatures going back millions of years that have become part of human folklore around the world. From Arachne, the mythical half-woman, half-spider of ancient Greece, to a Navajo spider woman, who's been said to steal small children and carry them back to her lair. Even B-movies from a black and white Hollywood vilify spiders. To millions, spiders are the cause of debilitating fear creatures they believe will cause harm and death. The true embodiment of dread. They continue their journey and arrive in the village of Pandari to resume their search for evidence. They are met by Simone and his father Antonio, who tell of villagers who have disappeared 
never to return. There's been many dead. Some uh, they are related to tarantula attacks, even though they have not they have not seen it. So what he's saying is, some people have died or disappeared due to what they believe are giant tarantula yes. attacks. They, that they, when they left their their gardens, so they, they walk at night, and some didn't return. Not only do the villagers here talk of massive spiders, MonsterQuest discovers they engineer their village against them. Is this tangible proof that something is out there? Are they afraid of tarantulas coming into their uh, dwellings? ¿Cómo no puedes repetir la historia que nos contabas de que los abuelos le decían que tenían que cerrar las churuatas para que los niños no salieran? Que haya la chocolate, con la chocolate, la mañana, la boca de la noche, como te. They build their huts with the thatch roof that goes all the way down to the ground. They seek for that additional protection because they have been told that the tarantulas could come into their communities and take away the tarantula. Really? That's amazing. The spider in the story is just the kind West and Ramirez are looking for. Not all spider horror stories emanate from far-flung countries. This massive web was discovered in 2007 by park officials in Lake Tawakoni State Park in North Texas. It was as big as two football fields. Within a few days, um, it had turned gray just from the amount of mosquitoes it was catching. It wouldn't surprise me if there were, you know, if a songbird or some other sort of small bird flew in. Could it have been created by a larger unknown spider? Or was it many spiders working together to capture prey? Researchers are still looking at that spider web and still collecting spider samples and trying to figure out what was going on there. But that's my guess, is that it was either one, a couple of species of spiders that make a lot of silk, or just a bunch of babies all hatching out, spiderlings hatching out at the same time. Walking through this trail, after hearing all those giant tarantula stories, <laughs> kind of worrying. Here's something, Rick. Uh, would, would that be a spider? They come across what may be another spider lair. That definitely looks like a spider burrow. We should probably scope it and see if there's anybody in there. They pull out the probe. Can you guide it to the sides or it's... Yeah, the chambers split into multi-chambers, actually. And are startled by what they see next. Look at that. That's huge. Okay, there's the abdomen. Can you see much more of her? Uh, uh yes, yeah. Is she going deeper? It looks, it looks like, like the leg disappeared. Uh, she's backwards, so it's pointing, uh, her abdomen towards you. So watch out if uh, she throws some hairs. Yeah. I'm starting to get them in my throat. <coughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. She's throwing more, yeah. I can see them coming up the burrow. They get in the nostrils and it can cause asphyxiation in small things. In a last ditch effort, West pulls out his knife to dig the spider out. We're close. Okay, that's a, a mold, piece of a mold. See the, see the fangs right here? They're very powerful. They have a very strong bite. Here she comes. Oh, she's oh, oh, kicking she's, hairs. She's rubbing hairs. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, gonna want to breathe that. Could this be their giant, a species larger than what's known? Oh, here she comes, here she, she comes. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. You can tell she's been running. Oh, see that? That's a defensive posture. So if I advance a little more, she will bite me. These fangs have got to be three quarters of an inch long. Those are enormous fangs. Wow. She would put the fangs right through my thumb. She pierced that with no problem whatsoever. It is by far the biggest they found. 50, 56 grams. But the giant still eludes them. When I stretch the uh, legs out diagonally, I would say that's a good 10 inches, maybe 10 and a half inches. That's close to what's known so far, but I mean, we're looking for the giant. We're looking for the monster of all tarantulas. I think there's bigger ones in this forest. That's oh. big enough for my taste. 